This week, a hate speech trial against One Nation leader Pauline Hanson has begun in the federal court. It comes after Hanson was accused of racially discriminating against Greens deputy leader Maureen Faruqi in a social media post from 2022. Hanson and Faruqi have both faced questioning so far in the hearing. So Sam, it all centres around comments that Hanson made on social media back in 2022 when she was accused of racially discriminating against Greens deputy leader Maureen Faruqi. So far, we've seen both Hanson and Faruqi face questioning this week. And what was the post that actually kicked all of this off, if we go right to the beginning of the case? So in a social media post following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, you'll remember that was in September of 2022, you were on holidays. I was. Blissfully unaware. I was awake. What you were, I was awake what you were when missing. Australia was sleeping. Anyway, at that time, Maureen Faruqi, who, as I said, is a Green senator, she wrote, it was then on Twitter, now on X, saying, Condolences to those who mourn the Queen. I cannot mourn the leader of a racist empire built on stolen lives, land and wealth of colonised peoples. She called for a treaty with First Nations, justice and reparations for British colonies. In response, Pauline Hanson told Faruqi to, quote, piss off back to Pakistan. And it's that comment that Maureen Faruqi is claiming was hate speech. So Pauline Hanson fires off a tweet towards Mm -hmm. Maureen Faruqi in 2022. What's happened from then to now? Yeah, so shortly after the tweets were posted, Maureen Faruqi moved to what's called censure Pauline Hanson in the federal Senate. And essentially what a censure is, is a formal statement of disapproval of a politician's actions or policies. It doesn't have any legal consequences and doesn't really hold much weight. We've seen a number of politicians censured and never really translates outside of Parliament House. So it's kind of like being told off. Yeah. So Faruqi urged her fellow senators to condemn Hanson's, quote, divisive anti-migrant and racist statement, which she had said unleashed an avalanche of hate. Instead, Labor and coalition senators passed a general motion at the time condemning racism and discrimination in all its forms. So she didn't really get the response from the parliament that she'd hoped for. She didn't. And so from there, Maureen Faruqi moved to lodge a complaint with the Australian Human Rights Commission. However, when Pauline Hanson refused to participate in an investigation there, Maureen Faruqi ended up pursuing legal action instead. And that's how we get to here. So Maureen Faruqi is arguing in this legal action that... Pauline Hanson engaged in unlawful, offensive behaviour and that that is a breach of Australia's racial discrimination laws. As part of this case, Faruqi has also provided expert analysis of social media users' responses to Pauline Hanson's post. Okay, so that's what Faruqi is arguing in court. What does Pauline Hanson say in response to all of this? Pauline Hanson is denying that the tweets were made based on race. Her lawyers have made two main defences. So the first is that the post is protected by fair comment on a matter of public interest. So arguing there that Hanson therefore had a right to make a statement defending the monarchy. Right. The second point that her lawyers are arguing is that the post is protected by an implied, but not an expressly stated, right of political communication, meaning that both Pauline Hanson and Maureen Faruqi have a right to engage in political debate. Okay, interesting. So... Pauline Hanson ultimately there isn't denying she ever said it. I mean, it's there in writing what she's she saying. She can't deny it. Yeah. M- millions of people saw it. Right. So what she's saying is she was allowed to say it because of those political and public interest defences. Mm. So both sides are bringing those arguments to court mm. this week. What have we heard in the court so far? Hello, I'm James and I produce the video you're watching. If you're enjoying what you're watching, we'd love it if you considered subscribing and checking us out on our other platforms. It'd really help in getting the word out about what we're doing here at TDA. Thanks very much. And now back to the deep dive. So day one started with Maureen Faruqi up as a witness and she was arguing, as expected, that Pauline Hanson's tweet was racist. She said that she felt like she had been silenced on colonisation and made to feel like she didn't belong here. She said that she, quote, started experiencing racism in an overwhelming way once she entered into public life. In response, Hanson's lawyer, Sue Crisenthal, argued, and I'll quote it here, the racism that you've experienced is far, far worse than the conduct that you complain about in relation to my client. Crisenthal went on to claim that the barrage of abuse that Faruqi said she had faced was actually due to her own tweet, which was described by the lawyer as provocative. 
Faruqi rejected this premise and she said that Hanson was a well-known, long-standing and prolific sayer of racist things. Okay, so then Maureen Faruqi went off the stand and Pauline Hanson then took over. What did she have to say? Yeah, so on day two, Pauline Hanson took to the stand and over the course of the day, she was essentially just played a number of clips of comments that she had made over a number of years, right. including in 2017 when she said, Islam is a disease. We need to vaccinate, our, vaccinate ourselves against that. So Faruqi's lawyers were claiming that Hanson told her to go back to where she came from because she is a Muslim woman. Hansen rejected this premise and said that in 2022, when she published the tweet about Maureen Faruqi, she didn't know that she was Muslim. So is that kind of questioning and back and forth that occurred on the second day of the hearing, Hansen spoke of feeling incensed and insulted by Faruqi's tweet. So quite a bit there. Obviously, there's still a bit to run in this case. We are expecting it to continue until the end of this week. So this is ongoing. We'll keep everybody updated as this case progresses. But Faruqi brought this case against Hansen in the beginning. What is she actually looking for here if she wins? She's asking for an apology from Pauline Hansen and $150,000 in compensation to be paid towards a charity. Whether or not she gets that, we will have to wait and see. Thanks for taking us through that, Zara. We'll bring everybody the result, perhaps in a news story, when that gets passed down by the court in who knows how long. That's all we've got time for on today's episode of The Daily Oz. Just a quick bit of news from The Daily Oz. We have announced that on Monday next week, we are launching our first sport newsletter. It's going to be hitting your inbox at 5 p.m. every weekday. It would mean the world if you signed up. I'll throw a link in today's bio. We'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 